are you planning on visiting Rome but only have two days to visit? Well, no doubt you're probably wondering what you can see in such a short amount of time, or if it's even possible to see everything. Well, today you're in luck because we're going to be giving you our best tips to optimize your two-day visit in Rome. So, stay tuned! Hi everyone, I'm Rick. And I'm Andrea. And today we'll tell you everything you need to know to make it the most of your two days in Rome. I've been going to Rome at least once or twice a year since I was a kid. Mm, that's a yeah, lot of times. <laughs> and there's so much to see, even for me. Mm -hmm. We created this video because if you only have two days, yes, you'll get to see the islets. And that's exactly what we are going to cover. But we are also able to give you some of our best tips for that only someone who's seen and been to Rome so many times knows about. These are the secrets. Absolutely. But first, if you like travel dead videos like this one, now it's a great time to hit the subscribe button down below so you'll never miss any future videos. Or, or any of our tips on your next trip to Italy. Absolutely. Also stay tuned until the end because we'll give you an itinerary to optimize your two days in Rome. Yes, that's actually going to be a downloadable itinerary that you can use. Absolutely. Okay, so before we begin, I think we need to set expectations, right? Um, you could spend a year in Rome and not see everything. So our first tip, and probably our most important tip, is to start by doing your research. Kind of like watching our videos. <laughs> <laughs> and make a list of what you'd like to see in advance. You know, think of it like a shopping list, yeah. right? There's no point in wasting your two days in Rome visiting landmarks that are not interesting for you and risking, you know, running out of time for the places that you really want to see. For example, if you're really interested in ancient Roman history, well, you should focus your time on, you know, the Forum, the Colosseum, the Pantheon, the, exactly, uh, and maybe spend less time visiting the Vatican. On the other hand, if you're really interested in Baroque architecture, then, well, you could probably spend a lot more time in the Vatican and, you know, the Trevi Fountain, exactly, Piazza Navona, exactly. So, I think it's best Make a list and see how many items you're able to see and enjoy in these only two days yes. in Rome. Let's move on to our next tip of for your two days in Rome, and we talk about make all your reservations in advance. Yes. Once you have a good idea on what you want to see in Rome, it's essential to book your, book your ticket in advance. Even better, book the skip the line tickets. Because if you only have two days in Rome, the last thing you want to do is spend the entire day or half a day waiting in line. Mm -hmm. if you likely will if you skip yeah, the step, if you right? Skip the step, absolutely. We'll leave a link in the description below for the most important skip the line tickets that you can get in Rome for the busiest attraction. Yeah, exactly. Also, if you're thinking of doing a guided tour, consider booking one at the attraction that really interests you the most. In fact, especially at the Forum or the Vatican Museum, a guided tour can give you those extra little tips of information that will make your visit so much more interesting mm -hmm. and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Having said that, make sure to book one, maximum two, guided tour of, uh, during your trip mm -hmm. because you'll likely be really, really <laughs> overwhelmed and tired with all the information. I know, I started to get tired or bored after a few hours on a guided tour. Remember that one time uh, we were with some friends in Rome and we decided to see everything in one day? It was yeah. a 12-hour tour. The guy <sighs> didn't even let us have time for lunch. <sighs> yeah, we made a mistake once and let us tell you, we were exhausted at the end of the tour. Yeah, so. I didn't care anymore about no. the, the next little thing. So one, two guided tour, one or two attraction, half a day is more yeah. than enough. Now on the same topic, if you're looking to eat some local Roman food, we suggest to make your reservations in advance. Yes, 
This is because the restaurants, they get sold out easily during peak season. And you don't want to waste your time looking for places to eat, mm -hmm. uh, or at least good places. Moving on to our next tip about Rome and on a two-day trip, and we're going to talk about your base camp. What does that mean? Well, if you only have two days in Rome, the last thing you want to be doing is spending all of your time zigzagging everywhere on a bus, on a metro, on a taxi. You're going to be wasting a lot of time. Hotels outside the city center, well, they might be cheaper, but then you'll need to take some form of transportation to get to where you want to go. And in Rome, traffic can be especially brutal during rush hours which means it's going to cost you more money. And time, and lots of time. For this reason, when you book a hotel in Rome, you should always book it in the city center as far away in advance as you can. If you want to book more budget-friendly hotels, well, the area by Termini, Cent Termini Station will be good. If you want to treat yourself to something a bit more upscale, then you can pick hotels in the Monte area, which is very close to the Colosseum and the Forum. We've stayed there several times. Yeah. And of course, in the Spanish Steps area, well, this is where you're going to find, um, you know, most of the five-star and super high-end hotels. Yeah. Now, if the Vatican is going to be a big part of your trip, you might consider staying in the Prati area. There, you're going to also find a lot of budget-friendly hotels. But be aware, the Prati area is not in the historic city of Rome. No, so it's the center. Or right in the historic city center of Rome. So that means it's going to require a lot of walking or transit to see the other big attractions in Rome. Time to talk about our next tip about visiting Rome in two days. And be prepared to walk <laughs> a lot. Be prepared to walk a lot in Rome is a, because Rome is a very walkable city. Most of the attractions are very close to each other and it's usually really pleasant to walk from place to place to place. Mm -hmm. For this reason, we strongly recommend you to wear very comfortable shoes. Avoid sandals, flip-flops, because most of the streets are very, very old and for that reason are very uneven. And some of them are even original, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you will risk tripping and hurting yourself if you do so. So, keep flip-flop for the beach and wear shoes. Okay. Now, if you have mobility issue and you can't walk too much, you can take a golf car tour. Mm -hmm. These are a lot of fun. And we feel they are much better an option than the up-on, up-off buses. Because they are smaller and they can go in areas where the up-on, up-off buses cannot go. Yeah, that's true, actually. You can't take a hop-on, hop-off to Trevi yeah, Fountain. Absolutely. Talking about things to wear, keep in mind a very important thing. Wear clothes that covers your shoulders and your knees if you want, if you're planning to visit the Vatican or some of the other major churches in Rome, because yep. that's the dress code. Exactly. Now, some people, they bring a, a big scarf with yeah. them, right? That's fun too. All right, so let's move on to our next tip for our two days in Rome trip, and that's to make sure to experience the food in Rome. Why is it always yeah. me that talks about food? <laughs> All right, so food is a huge part of Roman culture, and a trip to Rome would not be complete without experiencing the food scene in Rome. As we mentioned before in many of our videos, actually, I'm always the one, uh, you know, make sure to pick the authentic restaurants and not the tourist traps. So how do, you how do you spot a tourist trap? Well, these restaurants tend to be in front of major landmarks, such as the Pantheon, Piazza Navona, the Colosseum. Mm -hmm. And chances are, if you are in front of these places, the food is not the most authentic. And the restaurant in this area will charge you a premium for a very mediocre and sometimes frozen mm -hmm. food. Now, there's also a second hint, and this one is a dead giveaway. If they have a person outside trying to get you in, That's tourist it. trap. Tourist trap. In number three, if you see a menu outside with photos of pasta, pizza, steaks, burger, sushi. salad, sushi, whatever, <laughs> and anything else under the sun, that's for sure not authentic. In Italy, last, less is more. Right. And of course, if you see people eating, you know, between 4 and 6 p.m., mm. 
It's a tourist restaurant. I mean, Italians don't eat dinner before 7.30, and actually most not before 8.30 or 9 o'clock. Now, if you want to know more about what to eat or drink in Rome, check out this video up here. We're going to give you a few tips on what to eat in Rome. And what to order. And what to order. Now, this is all nice and all of that, but what should we see in Rome? Good point. Okay, let's start with the perfect two days itinerary in Rome. Now, we designed this itinerary to optimize your time in Rome. If you only have two days, it will allow you to visit the major landmarks in Rome and uh, skip the time in between. As we said in the beginning, if there is something that you don't care to visit or it's not very interesting for you, you can adjust the itinerary to suit your requirements. Yeah. Also, we leave a link in the description below to download the itinerary so you can have it with you on your phone. Absolutely, check it out. Or you can save the video and watch it again and again. <laughs> Why not, right? Absolutely. So let's begin on day one. For our, first, for our first day in Rome, we suggest you to start your tour bright and early around 9 a.m. 9 a.m. from Piazza Navona. Mm -hmm. You can walk around the piazza, and this is stunning, and admire the fountain of the Four Rivers, by, sculpted by Bernini. At this time, there won't be many people, so you can get a lot of photos and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful landmark. Yes, and this is a time to have a cappuccino as well, yes. by the way. From Piazza Navona, you can walk five minutes to reach the Pantheon. Unfortunately, the Pantheon inside is not free anymore but we think it's still really worth visiting, especially because that is the best absolute preserved Roman structure still in use today. Yeah, and it's a gigantic dome. It's and amazing. You'll see Raphael's tomb and, and the, 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 that eye in the middle, it's yeah. called the Oculus. You don't want to miss it, right? It's important and it's really, really beautiful. After the Pantheon, you can walk for a few more minutes to reach the famous Trevi Fountain. Take some photos and throw the coin in the fountain over your right shoulder. Because they say that if you do that, you will come back to Rome and oh. visit Rome again. How romantic, right? Yeah. Okay, so from the fountain you can walk 10 minutes or so to reach the famous Spanish Steps. By the way, if you want to see something really unique oh, and interesting yes, and free yes, yes. between the Trevi Fountain and the Spanish Step, take a look at this video up here. That's right, and yeah. uh, a little hint, it's in it's in a department store, in yeah. the basement of a department store. Who knew? And almost nobody talks about this. No. Okay, so when you get to the Spanish steps, you'll be in the Piazza di Spagna, and it'll be probably lunchtime. This would be a great time to grab some famous pizza al taglio, which is a Roman dish, or a nice hot suppli, uh, which are delicious, in one of the many, many places around this area. A suppli? What is that? It's a rice bowl uh, that is deep fried with some cheese inside, and when you open it, the cheese is gonna string. It's like really good. Sounds good. After lunch, you can catch the metro at the Spagna station or the Flaminio station if you walk a little further up, and head down to the Colosseum. By the way, if you want to know more about the taking the metro in Rome, Check out this video up here. Absolutely. Actually, I was, I was going to mention exactly the same thing. Yeah. That, was a, that was a fun video. We think the afternoon is um, you know, a good time to next visit the Colosseum and the Forum. But remember, you're probably going to be able to only see one unless you bought Skip the Line tickets in advance. Yeah. Otherwise, there's probably only going to be time for one or the other. After the Colosseum and the Forum, you'll have certainly gotten in your 10 or 15,000 steps, and it'll be getting time for dinner. Yep. You can have a quick aperitivo to relax, and then we st strongly suggest you to visit the Stra Trastevere area, and there you're going to find the best Roman food. Very authentic. Day 2. Day 2 is Vatican Day. Once again, you'll want to start bright and early to avoid the crowds and make the most of your trip. We suggest to visit the Vatican Museum and the Sistine Chapel in the morning yes. because it's less crowded actually. Mm -hmm. You'll need to pick your time when you buy your skip the line tickets and uh, so you can go straight through. Exactly, because if you don't, you're likely going to have to wait at least an hour or maybe even two outside sometimes under the hot sun, you know, if it's summertime, mm -hmm. only to get to the ticket counter. <laughs> you don't even get to see anything. Yeah, 
Once you're done with the Vatican Museum and the Sistine Chapel, you can move to the St. Peter's Basilica, where you can roam to the church and visit on your own. Mm -hmm. You're likely to be done around noon, because in, to get inside the basilica you have to go through the metal detector, and sometimes mm -hmm. the lines there are quite long. After that, we could recommend walking toward Castel Sant'Angelo, where you can find a nice place for lunch and uh, eat in the, right. the shade of exactly. some beautiful tree. Now, um, there's not much in Castel Sant'Angelo to see, so unless there's a specific reason you want to go inside, you yeah. just take a photo from outside and, and then move on. Now, after lunch, I think it's best to, I guess, grab a taxi yep. and head over to the camp. Pidolio. <laughs> Should only take a few minutes by taxi, but trust me on this one, your feet will thank <laughs> you for this little break. At the Campidolio, you can, you're going to see a bunch of stairs that you get to climb up, and at the top, you're going to reach the stunning Piazza del Campidolio, designed by Michelangelo himself. And this is where, uh, you know, you're going to find the city hall. Yeah, and um, the famous chateau Marco Aurelius. Yes, of course. After that, you can visit the Altar of the Fatherland. It's a big, wide monument that the locals say looks like a typewriter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the monument commemorating the King Vittorio Emanuele II, the father of Italy. Mm -hmm. At the very top of this beautiful monument, you'll find one of the most amazing views of Rome. So mm -hmm. we strongly recommend to yep. climb all the yep. stairs to yep. the top. Yep. 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 After that, you can walk to the ancient church of Santa Maria in Cosmetin, which you'll find the famous mouth of truth, mm -hmm. and do the little funny thing to put the, your hand in the mouth. That is really cool. And they do ask you to cover your yeah, shoulders and knees. After that, walk a few minutes to reach the Marcello Theater and the beautiful area of the Jewish ghetto, where you'll find a lot more local restaurant. Uh, if you haven't tried it, I'd recommend trying the deep-fried artichoke in the area. They are really, really good. Absolutely. After your artichoke, it's probably going to be night, and this is the end of your two days itinerary. Mm. As we said in a, before, this is a general itinerary that is going to allow you to see the most amount of landmark in Rome in two days. But if there's something that is interesting you the more, most, spend more time in visiting what is more fun for you, and skip everything else. Absolutely great advice. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this video and you enjoy your trip to Rome. If you have any questions or comments, um, let us know in the comments section below. And of course, if you happen to see us around, say hi. We love meeting you all. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Ciao.